name? I'm Susan. Hi Susan, I'm John. Do, do you have a, a newspaper? I don't have a newspaper. Sometimes I contribute things to the local watershed paper, but no. Can you tell me something about the watershed paper. Watershed paper, it's just pretty much local news. Um, anything that anyone in the area happens to see. For instance, I saw some bald eagles on the road on the side of the road one time. Uh -huh. That's news in our country. Now you talked about a gentleman that does some photography. What's his name? Yeah, Kurt Irish is his name. Okay. He's our local uh, Marcola historian. Okay. All right. So you worked at the, at the creamery. I did the Springfield Creamery. Nancy's yogurt. Yay! <laughs> For a long time. But when was it introduced? I forget. When was it introduced? Yeah. Describe your job. Whereabouts did you work? What did it look like? I actually worked in the plant itself, in the processing plant. So I started off in the shipping department where you would get the product afterwards and put it into crates and wrap it, put it on the pallets and send it away. And then I got into the production part. The, um, it was what they called, they catch the half pints. You would do 10,000 half pints a day. And you pick them up four at a time and put them in a little. Was it Nancy's yogurt you were handling? Oh yeah, it was Nancy's yogurt. Yeah. And, and you, you exclusively handled oh, Nancy's? That's all they make there, but Nancy's products. It's refill cream. Oh. Okay, so it, I, th I think they had a cottage cheese for a while, I don't know. They do, they make all that right there in their plant at, at Fairport Road. Everything that they make, they make there at that plant. Yeah. Um, okay, and you remember the mural? That's that was on the side of the Health Food and Cool store in Springfield? Yeah. yeah. That was, I think, maybe that might have been, you could check with the Keezys, but that might have been like the first mural that was in Springfield. It was, and that's what Chuck told me. Is it? Yeah. And it caused quite a problem with, with, with the locals who were very, very right wing and all that stuff. It was rather hippie art. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect for the store. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, Nancy said they had a pot at the end of the rainbow with pot plants. <laughs> I shouldn't say that you might want to edit this out, but we used to have a joke there that, you know, when everyone was drug testing, if they drug test at the creamery, and if you're not loaded, you get fired. <laughs> right. It's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. And, and they had a pool table. I, might have, I think I might have remembered that. You know, you to go up there on your breaks and stuff like that. And customers, too. It was yeah. just, there was a free clothing pool bin out in the front for people. It was one of the first health food stores around, too. Huh. Right around the time that Kiva was established in Eugene. I think it, and it had all the bulk items. Nobody yeah. did that then. You the know. clientele, can you describe the clientele? That would come into the health food store? Counterculture, for, but, but also business people. But uh, it was mainly, it kind of started out more counterculture. Yeah. Um, but then it, everyone frequented it. It was really a nice little store. A lot of people from up in the woods and stuff would come down to the city. Because and it was one of the only health food stores around at the time. Yeah, that was pretty much where you could get your supplies. And then all the other stores started coming in. There, there didn't used yeah. to be the natural grocers, you know, and Sundance and all. Or Sundance was around, but those kind of stores. But the clients had straw in their hair and smelled like goats and things uh, like they that. They had dreadlocks. They had <laughs> all sorts of stuff in their hair. These are some of the nicest people you could ever work for in your entire life. And you got good breaks and stuff? And good pay. We got we, we were paid above what for a factory worker. You know, oh yeah, they had, we had good vacations, good benefits. They were an excellent place to work. Huh. The only reason I quit most people die before they leave. The only reason I quit is I'm an outside girl and I was locked in the factory for ten hours a day. It was driving me insane. 
Yeah. Sort of thing. Did you get carbo tunnel thing with your wrist? Yes, I did get wow, how did I know? <laughs> well, I'm 10, sure. <laughs> pints a day. Right. <laughs> yes, I, I was one of the, actually right. the first ones to get that. Huh. And I think a lot of the uh, automation that's there now is to alleviate that because there's sure. there's no way to get around it unless you're automated. There's no way to get around it. And the machines the break down doing that. You know, I mean, I mean, why wouldn't human tendons and yes. things like that, you know, you know, break down and stuff? Okay, so, so, what, what was the? Hat, did you help put on any concerts or anything like that, or? No, but we would get we would get tickets sometimes. We got comp tickets to a Grateful Dead concert that was at the Oxford Stadium one time. I was there. You were there, and we were like, yeah. right, we got to go backstage. We were looking like it was like Jerry Garcia was this far away. Yeah, I was there. I, I, Nancy got me some tickets, backstage pass. We met uh, Ken and his people at the gate. We went in there, you know. Yeah, there, there they are, the Grateful Dead backstage. And they had the tent set up, and, you know. And, and, and the whole place reeked of, of marijuana. It's probably my fault. <laughs> I like the Grateful right. Dead, but uh -huh. I'm not a deadhead. But, okay. um, that concert, of course we were choking a little bit, but at that concert I remember they got into one of their um, uh, just harmonies, the, the, just the music, just the instruments. Yeah. You were just like transported to a completely different world. It was absolutely wonderful. Right. They were good. Okay. Well, and what's your name again? Susan. Susan. Well, thank you very much. Now, I mean, I don't know if anybody's recorded any workers or what it was like to work there, but like you know, it's going into my archives and stuff. And I because th I think it's important, mm -hmm. you know. If you know, we don't live forever, mm -hmm. you know. And, and and you just described some of the working condition conditions at, at probably one of the first alternative uh, businesses, definitely. probably anywhere. Yes, definitely. You know, in the world, I mean, people. You know, this, this you know, that's a model for uh, people all over. Think about it. If you were involved from the beginning, there was one point where they were they were kind of going under financially. The, the Nancy's younger people, yeah. and the Grateful Dead came up and did a concert for them as a benefit to raise money. And to think about starting a business from those humble surroundings. In fact, Chuck's father was in the dairy. That's how he got into it. He was in that whole dairy thing. He knew a lot of those dairy farmers I was telling you about out in Marcola because he yeah. ran. The Now, I heard one of the cartoonists for the Harry Freak brother, you know, the, the... Oh, yeah, the... He would come up with a shipment, or he would get a U-Haul and take some down to San Francisco. Oh, were you, really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you were loaded that truck up. No, probably not. It was probably maybe a little bit, just a little yeah. bit before my time. Okay. All right, Susan, thank you very much. Thanks.